with Distortions Unlimited fans, Darren Fowler here again. David Fowler did it to me again. My twin brother asked me a question. What are my favorite masks? Well, the question isn't so much, what are my favorite masks, but what is my favorite year of masks? And that would be 1987, Distortions Unlimited. The reason why this year is such a good year for me is because, one, I became aware in the West Spring Spook House what Halloween masks really were and what good ones looked like. And I fell in love with my favorite mask, the carnivore, which we call the Wayne Doodle. Long story, folklore. Anyway, David Fowler, this is for you. Going to tour the 1987 mask collections from Distortions Unlimited. Here we go. Have fun. Okay, 1987's catalog from Distortions Unlimited. A uh, really hard one to find. It's actually one of the few catalogs I don't have in my catalog collections from Distortions. But what I want to go over are the... Twilight Series mask from this year. Uh, there's one more mask that's not listed here. That is the hey, uh, Human Error mask. Uh, it's on a different page in the catalog, but it's still considered a uh, Twilight Series mask from that year. Uh, but some of the more difficult masks to find in this one that was only offered uh, this year, there were two of them, the Mandible mask and the Elliot the Cat from Hell. Neither one was really popular or picked up by Morris. But all the other ones were... Okay, as we just showed a picture of the 1987 Catalog Twilight Series masks, here they all are in the collection that I have. I'm going to start with Carnivore, who is my absolute favorite mask ever made. It's who I have a tattoo of on my back, and it is probably the scariest mask I think I have in my collection. Just a phenomenal sculpt color scheme, paint, it all worked well with this mask. Uh, when I first saw it in the West Spring Spook House, the actor that wore it had a party pooper thing that he blow into in his mouth and it would come sliding out. He's caged and he would slam against the bars and shoot that out of his mouth. He's got a living crap out of you as a kid, but hey, it was fun. So there was Carnivore. Well, let's go in order though of what the catalog was. And we'll start with the Blasted Mask from 1987. This is actually a later version of it. Uh, you can tell because of the black hair and the tag that's on the back is a 1990s version. And then we'll move along going into Death. This is an original Death Mask. You can tell this Death version from later releases. One from the hair, the white hair on the side. Straight white hair is a good indicator. You got a 1987 mask along with the painted eyes. Uh, some of the masks in the 1990s had stamped eyes, but the earlier copies of these masks in the 80s had painted eyes. So there's a good indicator. It's a little mask knowledge put on you. All right, moving along. This is another really hard to find one. And this is the classic alien mask. Uh, this one does not have hair. Uh, it actually came from uh, Adam's collection. I from Distortions, and I'm super excited to have that one here. I have re-glossed the eyes on this one uh, just to make them stand out a little bit more. And then we're moving on to Lumpy. This is another, for some reason, hard to find one. It was released by Trick or Treat Studios about four years ago. So if you want a copy of Lumpy, you can get a copy through Trick or Treat Studios. Uh, it's a generation smaller, uh, but this mask was sent to Justin Mabry uh, to be used as a paint master for the uh, Distortions Unlimited mask run that Tots did three years ago. And then moving into the Rotted Vampire, one of my more favorite sculpts and paint schemes. Just because of like nine different colors on this mask. Phenomenal mask. Red eyes staring down at you. Let's get this guy in the light so you can see some of the detailing on the paint. Blood, green boils, gray shadowing in the eyes. Just another phenomenal sculpt. And then moving on, there's Carnivore. We already talked about him. And then we'll move into Mandible. Now this mask I got from Jordy Shell in a trade. Um, Seen one or a copy floating around. Really hard to find. If you can get one, snag it. Uh, this one, I love the 
White hair again, like I said before, the white stringy hair, good indicator you got a 1987 mask on your hands. And then we have a Zendik Wizard from the year. This is a later version of Zendik Wizard. You can tell by the creep hair versus the white stringy hair. Uh, if you want to see what a good Zendik Wizard from 1987 looks like, check out Dirk Smith. Uh, unfortunately, my um, the eye paint chipped on me a, a year and a half ago when I was messing around with this mask. So I got to repaint that guy. Okay, now moving on past Zendik Wizard. Uh, we're going to go into Andromeda 3. This is probably my favorite Andromeda that Ed did of all the three or four that he did. Just because the cranium in this one has super great brain sculpt. Kind of reminds you of the Mars Attacks mask. This one had beautiful paint scheme with the pink around its mouth area. Love it. All right. Let's go to another gore mask. There it is. Oh, I didn't pull them out. All right. So, this one I didn't pull, I forgot. But there it is. Grizzle. It's Grizzle. Phenomenal war mask. All right. Move on up. Here's another one. This one is called Ludia. This one had black hair originally. But the problem with this mask, although it's a fun mask, it takes up a lot of shelf because it's about a foot and a half wide. And when you're trying to display a mask, that can be problemsome. So he gets kind of turned sideways on those shelves. All right. Another one from the year 1987 that is really hard to find. And that is Experiment. Probably one of the few Frankenstein masks that Distortions Unlimited did. Let me get him in some better light so you can see him. All right. So good on this one. Copper paint, silver paint, no rot. You get to some of the gold painted masks that Distortions did. It actually destroyed and rotted the latex. But this is a, another phenomenal sculpt. Uh, super detailed and painted. Uh, just never knew why this one didn't catch on very well. But the droopy eyes, the chrome dome. Just a phenomenal sculpt overall and attention to detail. This is one of my more favorite painted masks from Distortions on there. Just because... And then probably one of the most hardest to mask to find is going to be my uh, the cat guy right here. Um, I'm pretty sure Morris Costumes did not pick this one up um, in 1987. And the only way you could get this mask would be from Distortions Unlimited. Bought this one on eBay from Steven, uh, another mask collector. I don't want to actually ever seen. So Distortions fans... That's the 1987 catalog. Being a twin's fun sometimes. But hey, y'all have a great weekend. If y'all got any questions, ask them away. Test my knowledge on this stuff. See what we know and see what we can find out. And if I don't have the answer, we'll find the answer. We'll just ask it. Have a great one, guys. Bye.